My name is Kaylee and today I'm going to bring you some exciting news. On Thursday, April 8th, the Ministry of Tourism and Antiquity of Egypt has announced a new discovery of the Egyptian mission under the supervision of Egyptologist Dr. Zahi Hawass. This new discovery is a city in Luxor, now called the Rise of Aten, which has been under layers of sand for 3000 years, dating back to the reign of Amenhotep III. Amenhotep III is the father of Amenhotep IV, who is better known as Akhenaten, the father of King Tutankhamun. The city was founded by one of Egypt's greatest rulers of the New Kingdom, Amenhotep III. He was the ninth king during the 18th dynasty and ruled Egypt from 1391 BCE until 1353 BCE. The city continued to be in use during the reign of Amenhotep III, Akhenaten, Tutankhamun and even during the reign of King Ai, the successor of Tutankhamun. In September 2020, excavations had started at this location, in hopes of discovering the mortuary temple of King Tutankhamun, which was constructed by his successor King Ai. The reason the archaeologists believe that Tutankhamun's mortuary temple was at this location is because the mortuary temples of Amenhotep III, King Ai, Horhemheb and Ramses III are situated near it. Egyptologists do believe that the mortuary temple of King Ai used to belong to Tutankhamun as two colossal statues of the young king were discovered in this temple. The northern part of this temple is currently still buried under sand. But within weeks of the excavations, the team discovered formations of mud brick walls that appeared in all directions. Eventually, they unearthed the site of a large city in a very good state of preservation, with almost complete walls and with rooms filled with everyday life objects. The city has laid untouched for thousands of years, left by the ancient residents as if it were yesterday. The first goal of the mission after uncovering the city was to date the settlement. Hieroglyphic inscriptions found on clay caps of wine vessels helped them tremendously. These caps consisted of the seals of three royal palaces of King Amenhotep III, as well as the empire's administrative and industrial center. The archaeologists made a large number of finds such as rings, scarabs, colored pottery vessels and mud bricks bearing the seals of King Amenhotep III, confirming the dating of the city. After only seven months of excavations, several neighborhoods have been uncovered. In the southern part they have discovered a bakery, a cooking and food preparation area complete with ovens and storage pottery. The kitchen was catering a very large number of workers and employees, as can be stated from its size. The second area, which is still partially below sands, is the administrative and residential district, with larger and well-arranged units. This area has a zigzag wall, as can be seen in the photo here, with only one access point leading to internal corridors and residential areas. This single entrance makes the archaeologists believe that it was some sort of security, with the ability to control the entry and exit to the enclosed areas. Zigzag walls are one of the most rare architectural elements in ancient Egyptian architecture. It was mainly used near the end of the 18th dynasty. The third uncovered area or neighborhood is the workshop. On one side there was the production area for the mud bricks used to build temples and annexes. These bricks bear the seals of the cartouche of King Amenhotep III, Neb Mar Ra. On the other side is a large number of casting molds for the production of amulets and delicate decorative objects. This is evidence of the activity in the city to produce decorations for both temples and tombs. The mission of researchers have found many tools used in some sort of industrial activity, like spinning and weaving. Metal and glass making slag has also been unearthed, but the main area of this activity is yet to be discovered. This city used to be the largest administrative and industrial settlement in the era of the Egyptian Empire on the western bank of Luxor. Dr. Zahi Hawass said, the city streets are flanked by houses, of which some walls are up to 3 meters in height. We can reveal that the city extends to the west, all the way to the famous Deir el Medina. In one of the rooms, the archaeologists have found the unusual burial of two cows or bulls. Investigations are ongoing as to determine the nature and purpose of this particular practice. A burial of a person is even more remarkable as it is buried with its arms stretching out to the sides and the remains of a rope wrapped around its knees. The location and position of this skeleton are very odd and more investigations are in progress. One of the most recent finds are a vessel contained 10 kilograms or 2 gallons of dried or boiled meat. This vessel has a valuable inscription, Year 37. Dressed meat for the third Hepset festival from the slaughterhouse of the stockyard of Ka, made by the butcher Louis. 
This information not only gives the researchers the name of two people who lived and worked in the city, but confirmed that the city was active at the time of King Amenhotep III's co-regency with his son, who later became known as Akhenaton. The excavations revealed a mud seal with inscriptions that can be read as the domain of the dazzling Aten as well. This is the name of the temple built by King Akhenaton at Karnak. As history has told us the story, one year after this mud seal was made, the city was abandoned and the capital relocated to Amarna, under the rule of Akhenaten. But the questions remain. Was the city abandoned completely? Why was it abandoned? And why was the city repopulated again when Tutankhamun returned to Thebes, also known as Luxor? Betsy Bryan, professor of Egyptology at the John Hopkins University in Baltimore, described the discovery as the second most important archaeological discovery since the tomb of Tutankhamun. It will not only give us a rare glimpse into the life of the ancient Egyptians at the time, but will help us shed light on one of history's greatest mysteries. Why did Akhenaten and Nefertiti decide to move to Amarna, she said. The announcement of this discovery comes just days after the historic pharaoh's golden parade from Saturday, April 3rd which saw 22 royal mummies transported from the Egyptian Museum on Tahrir Square to their new home, the National Museum of Egyptian Civilization. I'm still working on my script for that video, but I had to postpone that to bring you this incredible discovery first. The rise of Aten city promises to be among the most significant of recent findings in Egypt. Although it remains to be seen whether it captures the world's imagination as Tutankhamun's golden mask and other artifacts have done for decades since his tomb was discovered in Luxor's Valley of the Kings in 1922. A large cemetery was found to the north of the city, as well as some tombs cut from rock. This cemetery and these tombs will be excavated in the upcoming months. The mission expects to uncover untouched tombs filled with treasures. I'm incredibly excited to see what more the archaeologists will uncover in the upcoming months. It's beyond exciting to see how much is being discovered in so many different locations in Egypt. But with that said, that's all the information that's been given to the public at this point. And as you know me, I will report on it once more information comes out. If you enjoyed watching, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos, and click the bell icon for notifications every time I upload. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, then click the card in the upper right corner or click the link in the description down below. I'd also like to thank my patrons, Richard, Barry, Floyd, Scott, James and NGC6543. And with that said, I'll see you in the next one.